Hey, welcome to this new episode of the Smarter Tech Podcast. My name is Nick, the EMF guy, you know, I'm an author and advocate for safe technology. And today I'm going to talk about a very specific type of EMF solutions that sold everywhere on the internet, all around in health food stores that I still don't endorse or recommend on an, in an official manner and especially to our course members inside uh, the new course I launched with Brian Hoyer called Electropollution Fix because it really made me think creating that course about what are the best solutions that people can buy while still respecting their budget. So we really had to look at all the solutions out there that can help you minimize your EMF exposure. For example, a countdown timer for your Wi-Fi or an Ethernet cable to completely turn off Wi-Fi and use a, uh, a wired connection instead. So these are, are good ideas, but they cost something. You're going to pay 20 bucks for the Ethernet cable and then a little gizmo to convert it to the USB-C on the, your MacBook if you have one. So the goal here was to look at all these solutions available and tell ourselves what is the most logical thing for people to purchase if they want to minimize their exposure to this stressful electropollution. And the problem I've been having for years is that when you type EMFs on Amazon, I'm going to share a screen just a second uh, here, click, click, there you go. So you type EMF, Amazon, uh, th this one is EMFs with, with an S, plural. Uh, on Amazon.com, what do you find? Well, you find a nuclear radiation dosimeter. I guess that's a little bit different. These are uh, nuclear fields and, and not what we're talking about, the, the, the cell phone stuff. Uh, you've got my book here and you've got uh, Dr. Mercola, some great documentaries, Resonance Beings of Frequency, which I really loved. And then you've got EMF protection products. For example, these stickers that you put on your phone and it says he's going to protect you. Uh, you've got EMF meters, which is good. You have uh, Lloyd Burrell. I love his book. I have this book as well. I uh, Take Back Your Power from my... my, my uh, my friend and colleague, uh, Josh Del Sol. And uh, then you have the group EMF <laughs> that uh, I was always, uh, <laughs> it's probably pissed off about my work because I'm, it kind of deformed <laughs> their entire thing anyway. Uh, and then you have other gizmos that are being sold. Uh, you have uh, these uh, kind of stickers. And if you go down the rabbit hole, you find a lot of different stickers, different gizmos that you can plug in. You have the e-link here. You have uh, different things that you can plug. If you type EMF, right, you find even more of these. Other stickers here and a type of card that you can put on your phone. Uh, other stickers uh, down here. The e-link. Then you have these EMF harmonizer, smartwatch chip. Uh, so you have a lot, a lot of them. So I can tell you a few things about these. First, I've been contacted by well over 50 corporations that have products like these that claim to harmonize the electropollution in your personal space or in your home or even very large areas. They claim it's going to harmonize the signal and now the signal is either I've heard you're 100% protected or it's gonna turn a, a harmful cell phone, si cell phone signal into a beneficial signal. I've even seen these sort of, sort of claims. So they vary from company to company. And the fact that I've shown these companies on Amazon and I'm naming names and you see them, it does not mean I don't think these products work. Okay, so I don't, don't want this video to be a slam against specific corporations. It's not that idea. It's just to tell you how I consider these devices. So the first reason I'm not endorsing them, there's 50 to 100 companies that have contacted me and they pretty much each claim that their product is the best or even most of them or a lot of them, to be fair, claim that they are the only product that works. So how do you compare between different devices? Because in almost each case, you install something on your case right, uh, on, on your phone case, uh, a sticker or a little gizmo that claims to harmonize the signal, and then you take an EMF meter and you take a reading, but it doesn't change it because it's, it's supposed to change the properties of the wave and not remove the wave. If you turn off your phone, you're removing the EMFs, removing the problem. 
if you use the harmonizer, you're left kind of guessing that it's harmonizing, right? So it, it's it's a qualitative and not quantitative assessment that would need to be made, but we don't know how to compare between the different gizmos. So how am I to endorse one company or one product when I don't know how to show efficacy of these things? So that's something to think about. Now the claims. Sometimes the claims are 100% protection. The problem is, at the moment, we simply do not know on a scientific standpoint what is a safe level of exposure to man-made electromagnetic fields. I'm talking about the cell phones, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, smart meters, the cell towers, even household electricity and magnetic fields and dirty electricity and even artificial light. A lot of types of electropollution we need to think about that we address in uh, my book or the course Electropollution Fix and these things. So if you heard about uh, EMF mitigation specialists or building biologists, that's the type of fields that they aim to reduce. We know that these fields have an impact on biology, but we don't know to what extent or what is a safe level. We simply do not know what is a safe level. So how can we claim that harmonizing these signals will lead to no impact on our biology when even the science of electromagnetic biocompatibility, which would study, for example, the idea of creating a safe Wi-Fi, a Wi-Fi that your body ignores, literally, or even lives in harmony with, well, that science is not even, it's just starting out. It's not even in its infancy. So if we don't understand how EMFs impact the body exactly, how can we claim that you'll be protected, right? So it's too early for that, and that's unfortunate, but you cannot claim 100% protection. And this is, if a company claims 100% protection, I have a problem with that because I think it is unscientific to say that, and it is even dangerous to say that, unfortunately, because it gives users a false sense of security. Now, what could you claim around these devices? I've seen... And I'm not dogmatic about all these gizmos are completely bogus. I don't believe that. And some of my colleagues, unfortunately, have said that in interviews or in their work, and I don't agree with them at all. And they're still my colleagues, and that's okay because we can disagree in in, in this space, and this is the base of uh, scientific discussion and just being a good person. <laughs> so we should disagree, and we should talk about it. I strongly disagree with some of my colleagues or people who claim these chips or personal protection pendants and different things, including shungites and scalar waves and pyramids or EMF harmonizing stuff. There's a lot of different technologies. Some of them are active and active electrical signal. Some of them are passive like a crystal, but there's something to these technologies. I don't know which product is initially more promising than another. I have uh, I did an episode on biogeometry, for example, which is very interesting. There's been a large-scale study in uh, two entire cities, if not more, showing that people felt better even in a high electrosmog environment. So I'm not denying that there could be effects. Some people, for example, wear a personal protection pendants. They feel better. And it might be placebo. They might feel more reassured, right? But also, there are independent institutes that have looked at the health effects of certain of these harmonizing devices and have found biomarkers such as heart rate variability that is uh, a sign of bodily stress or nervous system stress that is ameliorated when you have a cell phone with a chip compared to a cell phone with no chip. So you have placebo-controlled trials that are small but that do show an effect and i think that's something we should not ignore that there uh, there are studies around uh, uh blood blood quality uh rulo formation or lack thereof rulo is when your uh, red blood cells stack together and that's a phenomenon that is often associated with emf exposure um, i've heard conflicting reports from scientists about whether it's happening or not but there's some studies that show that the blood is cleaner um, after exposure to a cell phone plush 
a chip or something that harmonizes the signal versus a cell phone with no chip, which shows that the blood has bad impacts, whether it's a change in the form of red blood cells or other characteristics of the blood that change over time. You have studies that show the reduction in oxidative damage, for example. So to me, it's undeniable that some people feel better, feel less symptoms from electropollution, and should consider using these devices, especially if you are exposed from the outside, the towers, and uh, inside your home, you already do your best to reduce exposure, but the outside exposures makes you feel uneasy. Uh, you should probably consider using these technologies on top of it. If you're traveling, and that's often the case for a lot of people, or just moving to an office environment, you cannot turn off the Wi-Fi uh, completely off or change things uh, like that. You should aim to change things, but if you have unavoidable, unavoidable exposure or let's say occupational exposures, you should consider personal protection devices. I won't tell you which one because I don't know which one. You should find something that works with you, with you and if you like it, you can share about it, but we don't know if they're 100% protective. They might be supportive of good health, but I saw a lot of companies who clearly show that their gizmo will make you a healthier person because it kind of removes stress in general, and then they add an EMF component in there, uh, in there an EMF claim, and they say, well, it kind of protects you from EMFs. No, it doesn't. It supports your body's ability to handle stress. This is extremely different, which leads me to point number three. These things are not endorsed by the scientific community. And when I say scientific community, I talk about the independent scientists that have been sounding the alarm about electropollution for the last several decades, not mainstream science, uh, broken and outdated view that these signals do nothing to the human body. But I challenge you to find several scientists who endorse these EMF harmonizing devices and who say, you know, the, the, the entire topic is solved now. We just have to wear one gizmo and we'll all be fine. I have not found a scientist that is active and in these groups of uh, the Bioinitiative group, for example, or other people that have signed appeals to the United Nations or WHO or world governments, you would be hard pressed to find several scientists that endorse these devices. There's also unreliable effect on people who suffer from microwave illness or electro hypersensitivity. Some people feel better using certain things and some people feel worse. And it's kind of hit or miss. So if you will feel worse using one of these devices, you should probably discontinue use. If you feel better, you should likely continue using it. But there's no cookie cutter approach here because we barely understand the bioelectric nature of our body. We know the brain is electric. We know that the heart is electric. Your nervous system is electric. A cell, a cell membrane has an electric gradient, a voltage gradient. Mitochondria produce energy. And there's, in fact, multiple lightning strikes worth of, of electricity in a mitochondria. And I don't understand why. I'm not a biophysicist, but it's a marvel of nature that uses a lot of EMF signals to communicate within the body and with other people. So, and that's something that's not widely recognized, but emergent science and frontier science clearly demonstrates that we are bioelectrical. Just look at the work of uh, Dr. Uh, Robert O. Becker, the body electric, and I'll put it in the show notes. So that's important to know that we barely understand the human body on an electrical standpoint. So how could we possibly design devices that cancel out all the possible interactions between the signals in your area and your cells. The truth is we can design something that looks like it's protecting you, but is it really protecting you? We don't know exactly. We don't have that certainty. So in the meantime, what should we do about this? First, you reduce your exposure. How can you do that? You turn off stuff you move away the sources from your body 
Especially you clean up your bedroom. That's my bedroom slash office and this is the cleanest environment in my home. I remove all the wireless devices. I turn off the electricity at night. I don't have wireless anything here in the bedroom and the, the phones are turned off or on airplane mode when I go to sleep. These are steps I teach in my book, in my course. It's all in the show notes, blah, blah, blah. So start with that. Second, if you come across these devices and you still have money left, After applying the mitigation strategies that I teach and that scientists recommend, they recommend reducing the levels uh, and following the precautionary principle and the principles of preventative medicine that we all need to think about. And if you say, well, you know, Nick, how come everyone doesn't have have cancer from electropollution? Well, are we going to really wait until everyone has cancer to declare that we should take action? This is simply a straw man argument and it doesn't make any sense. We know that it's a carcinogen or it will be reclassified as a carcinogen within 10 to 20 years. That would be my assessment of the science and following the top epidemiologists who say that, like Dr. Anthony Miller, I'm going to show a study in, in the show notes. And I have the previous episode, I did talk about that study. So... What we know at the moment is bad enough that we should just drop the levels, reduce your exposure, clean up your own. If you reduce your exposure already, then feel free to buy gizmos and things that harmonize your environment. I buy them. Hey, I buy them. (laughs) I try them. I've been sent stuff. I use them on my person. Have I felt a difference? It's hard to tell for me, but I'm not extremely sensitive to these signals. I've gotten less and less sensitive as my health improves and uh, in the last years and as I've been cleaning up my environment. So I cannot really tell, but I am actively trying them, testing them, trying to understand how could we test them better because maybe they're part of the solution. You reduce the levels and then you support the biology. It's two different things. These are not And I'll I'll tell it like that. It might be a little bit dogmatic how I'll say it, but I think I need to make a a strong definitive statement. These are not EMF protection devices. Not in my mind at the moment looking at what we know. These are not EMF protection. They are EMF support devices. So it's a different category altogether. So I hope it clears out the misunderstanding a lot of people have around these gizmos. I've been asked that question by top functional medicine doctors, engineers, so many extremely intelligent people are asking me, Nick, can I put a chip on my phone and just call it a day? And my answer is categorically no. You should not just do that. Reduce your levels of exposure, do the work, and if you want to add an EMF harmonizing thing and test these things out, by all means, do it. But these are not your sole means of protection or even the first means of protection you should try. I hope you like this episode. Please pass it around. And if you do not agree with me, please go ahead in the comments. I'm happy to have a healthy debate about that. I know it's going to ruffle some feathers, especially from companies that sell these. But at the moment, I cannot put them in an EMF protection category. That's all I'm saying. Uh, For me, it's not EMF protection. It should not be called EMF protection. It should be called EMF support. And uh, if they want to call their devices EMF support, then good, good news. And you can probably uh, use them, but just know in which context. I hope you like this episode and I'm going to talk to you next time. See ya.